What's going on everyone? So I think it's safe to say that I'm pretty familiar with Parasound's products. And I say that because before I started Zero Fidelity, I already owned a number of their amplifiers to include the JC1 monoblocks. And ever since starting Zero Fidelity, I've reviewed a number of their amplifiers ranging from affordable pieces that are so small that you can pretty much hold in your hand just like this, all the way up to the mighty JC5, which currently serves as their flagship piece. But a lot of you have wanted me to talk about their latest integrated amplifier, the Hint 6, so that's exactly what I'm gonna be doing today. So guys, welcome to my review of the Parasound Hint 6 integrated amplifier. Let's roll the intro. Oh baby, I love your madness. It's so incredibly beautiful. Alright guys, so here it is, the Hint 6 Integrated Amplifier. Now this unit belongs to Parasound's Halo line, which is their top end line. And the price is consummate with that premium because this unit retails for 3,000 US dollars, making it one of the more expensive full featured integrated amps out on the market. When I say full featured, basically this is meant to be a one box solution. It has a built-in moving magnet and moving coil phono stage. It has a built-in DAC using the ESS Sabre 9018 chipset. And you also get a built-in headphone amp. Now, it doesn't have the ability to stream directly to the unit, and I'll get into that a little later on in the video. But for now, that's basically what this unit was designed to be, is that one-stop solution. Now, because there's so much to unpack here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go over what it is you get with this unit. We're going to look at the front, we're going to look at the back, we're going to take a look at the inside, and then I'm going to talk about how it sounds. So, to kick things off, let's go over a few facts. Number one, this is a pretty powerful integrated amp. It'll output 160 watts into 8 ohms or 240 watts into 4 ohms. And you also get this little remote control there, which is always cool. And taking a look at the front, what we're going to do is we're going to go over what you see here, starting from left to right. So this is going to be a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is where the headphone amplifier is. Now, funnily enough, I don't know how much power this will output just because it's not even in the manual. So once I get that information, I'll have it in the description box down below. Next to it, we have an auxiliary, a 3.5 millimeter input for your phone or MP3 player or whatever. Next, you'll see some tone controls. We have treble and bass. And if you want to activate that, just go down here, hit the tone button. You'll see the light illuminate, and then you can mess with the tone controls till your heart's content. To disable it, hit it again, and away you go. Next to that, we have something interesting. This is a sub level, so this will adjust the gain of the subs if you have them connected. And you can go 10 dB one way, or negative 10 dB the other, which is kind of cool. Over here, you'll see that we have our inputs. And to adjust the inputs, you just go over here, if you want to do it manually, and use this button. So kind of cool. Next to that, we have our left to right channel balance. Here we have a dimmer, so if you want it to be nice and bright, you can do that. Or you can turn down the volume display. So we have our mute button, pretty self-explanatory. The volume control is going to be analog. I believe it's a Brewer Brown ladder arrangement, but the display is going to be digital. And it is nice and smooth, very responsive, and Parasound did a great job with this. Anyways, now that we've seen the front, let's take a look at the back. All right, so here it is, and there's so much going on back here that it almost looks like an AV receiver. So to get through this as quickly as possible, starting from left to right, we have a set of balanced inputs, we have some balanced outputs, we have a balanced sub out, which is kind of cool. We have a phono input, we have five analog inputs, we have a fixed recording out, we have home theater bypass, not just for your left and your right speaker, but also for a subwoofer. And speaking of subs, we also have a dedicated subwoofer output. And what's cool is there's actually a crossover feature built in, ranging from 20 hertz to 140 hertz. Super versatile. Over here we have a preamp output that can also double down as a second subwoofer out. And what's nice about this is if you want to run stereo subs and to actually listen to them in stereo, you can use both of these connections. So that's really nice. This is gonna be our DAC section right here. So we have a USB input, coax in, and two optical inputs. Here's gonna be our triggers for IR control. And this is gonna be our five-way speaker terminals. So overall, yeah, pretty cool stuff. Now let's take a peek inside. Okay, so I'm gonna go handheld for this last section. And the first thing that I wanna draw your attention towards is this piece right here. 
which is a cover that hides a large toroidal transformer. And I'm not sure how much power that transformer has. If Parasound's willing to share that information with me, then I'll have it in the description box down below. But yeah, pretty cool stuff. Moving on, we have some output capacitors. I believe it has roughly 40,000 microfarads of output capacitance, which is okay. It's not amazing, it's not terrible. It's about what you'd expect from something like this. We have some heat sinks. And I noticed that we have the transistors sandwiched between the PCB and the heat sinks here, meaning I can't tell which transistors they use. Well played. Now this is going to be a high bias class AB amplifier. The Parasound engineering team designed most of it, but John Curl is the one who actually designed the amp section of this piece. So it's kind of like a hybrid John Curl design. Anyways, now it's time to talk about how it sounds, but before we do that, let me make it clear that my evaluation is going to be from the perspective of how this unit performs with loudspeakers. I'm not going to talk about the headphone section or the analog stage or the digital stage. It's just going to be focused purely on the natural performance envelope of this unit. So with that said, let's get right to it. All right, so when it comes to the performance and sound of the Hint 6, Think of it as being the jack of all trades, but a master of none. And in order to appreciate what I mean, sit back and think about what means the most to you when it comes to a good listening experience. Maybe it's tone, maybe it's imaging, maybe it's bass, speed and articulation, whatever it is, the Hint 6 is gonna be like a seven or an eight out of 10 in pretty much every single category. Now what this means is you're gonna ultimately end up with a very balanced and competent listening experience pretty much no matter what you own. In fact, this is exactly what Parasound was going for because they realized if they voice this product in any particular direction, then it's gonna alienate the kind of people who would number one, enjoy it, but then number two, alienate the kind of products that would work well with their piece. So it's really in their best interest to try and be as neutral as possible. Now, when it comes to voicing, well, everything has a character and I would say that the Hint 6 has a character that's on the warm to smooth side of neutral, but only just a little bit. In fact, let me explain. Starting with the treble. So the treble, if you were to compare the top end of the Hint 6 to other $3,000 integrated amplifiers, especially purist pieces, then you'd notice that the Hint 6 veers slightly towards the smooth side of things. Meaning if you have aggressive sounding speakers, the Hint 6 is gonna take the edge off just a little bit, but it's not gonna rob that product of its inherent character. It's just gonna take the edge down just a little bit, all the while maintaining good information. It's gonna be relatively extended. Uh, you're not gonna feel like you're missing resolution per se. Now, it's not gonna, of course, be the most revealing thing on planet Earth, but again, that's the kind of trouble you're gonna get. It's reasonably well extended, but just smooth enough to where if you have bright sounding speakers, it'll take the edge off. Then let's move to the mid-range. So the mid-range is where that little bit of warmth comes in, which again can be a great thing, especially for people who have those forward sounding speakers that maybe have that slightly thin sounding mid-range. There's gonna be just enough warmth there to give those speakers a greater sense of fullness and density. But it's not so overdone to where if you take warm sounding speakers, it won't all of a sudden sound like male vocalists just gained 20 pounds overnight. So uh, <laughs> it's, very expertly done. The mid-range I would say is mostly neutral, but there's gonna be just a little bit of warmth there that I actually think makes for a very pleasing listening experience. And then you have the bass. It's strong, it's powerful, but well controlled, as you would expect from an amp that has this kind of power. Now, when it comes to dynamics, the dynamics are gonna be good. In fact, just about everything, imaging is going to be good. Now, at this price point, I think this is where the purest pieces really do have the advantages in imaging. With uh, this amplifier, I noticed that I have to tow the speakers in a bit more to get superior focus in between the speakers, but by and large, the imaging is gonna be pretty good. And ultimately, and this is what I really wanna focus on, what I noticed about the Hint 6 is the listening experience. While I've had products at this price point and a little bit less, and definitely uh, products that cost more, that are more revealing and maybe truer to the source. I found that when listening to the Hint 6 through the products that I have here, I noticed that it just made for an enjoyable listen. I focused a little bit less on the hi-fi and just a little bit more on having fun with the music. And I think there's something to be said for that, even though it objectively can fall behind the competition when it comes to being revealing. So with that being said, Nothing, of course, is perfect. This has been a positive review so far, so let me go over some negatives with you guys right now. All 
All right, so there's two things that I wanna go over here. In fact, the first thing is something that I already hinted at, which is if you're a purist and you're looking for the absolute best sound that you can get for $3,000 and you don't need any of these features, then your money is better spent going towards either A, a different integrated amplifier, or B, if you wanna stick with Parasound, then you can get their own separates for around the same amount of money that will give you better performance. Moving on, for those of you who like to stream, you're gonna notice, well, wait a minute, there's no Bluetooth streaming built into this, and this is a $3,000 integrated amp. What's up with that? I asked Parasound the same question, and to be fair, they gave me a straight up answer. They said, hey, look, we checked into it, we want to do it, but this is kind of outside of our field of expertise. We could contract someone to do it, but that's just not how we like to do things. And quite frankly, we've come to find that there's a number of companies that have built better mousetraps than what we could develop. So we just decided that instead of trying to include this ourselves or to contract someone to do it for us and to bump up the price and to worry about support and all these other things, we're just gonna give people the choice to choose their streaming device of choice. Do you like that answer? Do you not like that answer? Well, that's up to you to decide, but that's what's going on there. And you know what? There's no other complaints, so let's move on to my final thoughts. All right, so in summary, I think in order to appreciate the Hint 6, you have to realize who it was designed for because it's not for the purist. Instead, it's for the audio enthusiast and music lover who says, hey, look, I want a really good listening experience. I want something that's powerful to where I don't have to worry about whether or not this can safely power the speakers that I have in a room that I have. I want something that has good features, stuff that I can use now and or stuff that I can use into the future and something that has a sound to where I feel like I can listen to my entire music library or listen on the speakers that I own now or plan on owning in the future without having to worry about encountering a bad listening experience. I want something that's consistent and pleasant. That's who the Hint 6 is designed for. Now, as a reviewer, this is great news because one of the questions that I'm always asked is, hey, does this product make for a good match with these speakers or do these speakers sound good with this amplifier, et cetera, et cetera. And with the Hint 6, I can say, I can't think of a set of speakers that would sound outright bad with the Hint 6, which makes it a pretty easy thing to recommend. Now, I'm not always gonna say that the speakers that you have are gonna sound best with the Hint 6, but odds are they're probably gonna sound pretty good. And I think the only thing that I didn't mention in this review is the noise floor. So the previous iteration of the Parasound integrated amplifier, in my opinion and in my experience, had a high noise floor, which is very noticeable on high efficiency speakers. I'm not getting that out of the Hint 6, which I think is a great thing because one of the things that really annoys me is having that hiss sound play in the background whenever you turn on a stereo system. I don't hear that with the Hint 6 and that's, to me, always good news. So anyways, that's just going to be my take on this integrated amplifier. Guys, as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, peace. Okay, so I'm filming this quick bonus section because I figured some of you are going to want to know, how close does the Hint 6 come in performance to something like Parasound's flagship gear, the JC2BP preamp and the JC5 combo? Well, here's going to be the honest to God truth. I know some of you are hoping that I'm going to say that it's about 70 or 80% of the performance for a lot less money, but that's not true. It's more like 40%, 50% at low volumes. Because here's the unpopular truth. If you want to get flagship performance, you got to pay that kind of money. Plain and simple. The Hint 6 is very nice for what it is, and there are going to be some similarities. They're balanced sounding pieces. They have a character that airs slightly to the warm side of neutral, but beyond that, the performance envelope of the JC2BP and JC5 is definitely on a whole other tier, as it should be, from something like the Hint 6 and pretty much anything at this price point. So, that's going to be the answer to that question, and now for real this time, peace.